Hello, there's been a recent push in Shanghai to make all of the edges green. Right, so today I go off to the Carbon Neutrality Expo here in Shanghai, something I only found out about just yesterday, so I'm not really very well prepared, but apparently there are a whole ton of new energy vehicles there as part of the expo, and it's not so busy, so we can get a better look at some of those cars, hopefully. Today's expo is at the new exhibition and convention centre, which is exactly the same place that the large and busy auto show was at. Rather snappily titled 2023 Shanghai International Carbon Neutrality Expo in Technologies, Products and Achievements. You can see it's actually really, really not very busy here at all. This is the tank and way stand. Both of them are Great Wall Motors brands. Way and tank also do quite a lot of internal combustion engine cars. Now one that isn't uh, and is only electric is Aura, which is actually another Great Wall brand. And this is the Funky Cat. You can see there's several of them. I'll try and show you in some cars, which I didn't really do last time so much. This very VW Beetle styled one is the Punk Cat. And again, I'll just show you the interior of that as well. I can get into this one, have a little look inside. As is often the case, many stands and many EVs. Here's just a quick look around the Chungun ones. We'll see the SLO3 again sometime. I quite like this car. Um, it's an empty uh, show, but uh, thank you very much. <laughs> and next we have the Avatar stand, another range of cars. It's getting a little bit busier here, actually. Avatar or Avatar 11 is the main car that they're pushing. It was a JV between Chungung and Neo, and I think Neo pulled out. And it's one of the first Chinese cars that has Huawei inside. I actually quite like the look of it. We have some not fully Chinese representation. So here we've got SAIC Volkswagen with the Audi Q5 e-tron. And there's the ID6, the ID4, the ID3. We saw the ID7 at the main auto show, and I don't think we're seeing it here. IM's making some noise in the distance there, but you'll remember the Neo uh, stand and brand. Many blue-suited people last time, hardly anybody here today. Uh, they have a real brand of, you know, eco-life, high quality, and uh, battery swap, innovations, etc. Let's just have a quick look inside the ES6. And there's the ET5. This is the uh, Shenlan stand. They have this SL03, has a very large uh, range, supposedly. Again, I quite like the look of it, and it's relatively inexpensive as well. Let's have a quick look inside the SL03. Rising. They had the same cars as before, this R and F7. Here's the Nita stand where they are pushing mainly the GT and this is the S. The S has what's becoming quite common with the scissor doors, you can see there, whether you like those or not. I think the easiest way to close them is just pushing this button here. And there's the GT. A quick look inside the GT. Over here we have the Geely stand. Several models there. I believe this one, G6, was designed by a British engineer apparently. Let's have a quick look inside if we can. 
Here's the Lincoln Co. stand. They're a Geely kind of sub-brand. Uh, they're usually one of the noisiest and disco-like stands at any show. Trying to be a little bit slower on panning around so that you can see the cars a bit better. Here we have the Chevrolet Cadillac Buick stand. I think this is in collaboration with SAIC. There's the Chevrolet Menlo, don't so much know so much about that. Here we've got the Buick Electra. There's inside again. And over there we've got the Cadillac Lyric. That was 5.1, here we are going into 6.1, which has mainly got cars in again. At a fairly quiet end of uh, hall 6.1, we have uh, the Nissan stand. There they have a couple of hybrids and then we've got the full EV Aria. And then uh, Zika here, they've got their larger 009 vehicle and then there's the X. Uh, was the car that they were pushing at the auto show and then there's the O1 here is inside the Zika X with the typical smaller screen there totally empty stand here I think this is called Lumin and here's one of the, uh, the little micro cars that uh, have been a little bit more popular recently I don't know the price on it I'm afraid otherwise I would tell you let's have a look inside this one as well here of course are BYD they're always going to have a stand one of the most uh, popular and widely manufactured brands this is the Tang and the Dolphin the Dolphin famously has got massive order books that they can't totally fulfill at the moment i'm sure that's a little bit unfair and then there's the han and the seal following along on this kind of aquatic theme that they've had but they don't really have it on their stand this time that that aquatic feel they don't have the seagull either which is a bit unfortunate that was a very popular model and as ever this time let's try to have a little bit of a look inside this is the dolphin we're in a stand from Bosch showing off some electric motors and then this was a surprise we've got Tesla here okay so Tesla were not at the auto show at all we've got an S and an X here everybody totally familiar with Teslas so no point to go into too much here tiny look inside there SAIC stand again quiet we've seen that one before on the IM stand and there's the MG as it's called the Mulan here in China but the MG4 elsewhere around the rest of the world again let's have a quick look inside there but uh, hoping to do pretty well I think the MG4 here's uh, an interesting car it's the Polestar 2 which is what uh, Elliot used to try and beat me on the car versus train video to Hangzhou there's the inside now I'm particularly interested in this car because I'm going to be hiring one to drive in the UK from Hertz in around about two months time now I notice on this stand today that they don't have a three or a four which are the ones that they've recently launched and they're concentrating mainly just on the two here I guess the three and the four are elsewhere possibly still a nice minimalistic uh, stand obviously they're part of the Geely group together with uh, Volvo who are next door over there what we also have is Dong Fung Motor here with a chunky 917. That's not very ecological if this is a carbon neutral event. Anyway, you can see there's some other models on their stand. And here we are coming over to Volvo. So on the Volvo stand, we've got some hybrids and uh, one or two 
fully electrics with the XC40. Here we have the Hongqi brand, the uh, quite famously Chinese brand. They have this excellent styling of the uh, silver rib through the bonnet there. Some fully electric vehicles, quite large still. Luxury brand. You can see some of the BMWs. There's that i7. That was at the uh, main auto show, I remember it. It was very popular there. Hopefully they've got nothing but i here. Yeah, that's an i3. And then there's an iX3 there. Obviously with this being the carbon neutral show, they're trying to focus only on the electrics. Let's just have a look at some details on the cars there. There's the i7. Let's see if we can have a quick look inside. Yes. Probably really suits the Chinese market. You can see there's some people sat in the rear there. It's a bit reflective, but uh, classic in the China market that a car like that would be really for having a chauffeur to, to drive you. And this is inside, I'm not sure what this, this car was, the i4 there. Uh, empty red carpet here in 6.1 and some areas, you know, kind of feels a little bit like half-baked here. I may be unfair on Peugeot and Citroen by saying that they weren't at the auto show. I don't remember seeing them. However, it was a massively large show. I don't know details of the models. This has 2023 stamped on the plate there. Let's have a quick look inside. C5X and then there's a Peugeot 408X. Nobody on the stand. With BMW, Volvo and Hongqi, that is us leaving the car brands, the China car brands behind. Now we start getting into the other areas of transportation, mainly in shipping here. And we've got a little bit about planes and the metro in the rear there. We'll have a look at those stands next. This is CSSC, which is the China State Shipbuilding Corporation. Of course, they're bound to have loads of fantastic models more models for you. We get back a little bit more to the carbon neutrality. There we've got a bit of offshore wind uh, and some other solar in that model there, some cows. And this looks to be a uh, hydrogen fuel cell. I expect that we'll see a few more of those in the rest of the expo. China Merchants Group has some excellent models as well, using some modern sails there. Natural gas carriers by the looks of it. And then here's another couple of shipping stands. There's Costco. Good to see that Maersk are on brand there with the decarbonizing. They've got the smallest stand as well. Some of these other stands are massive. Another interesting stand we have is Comac, so the Chinese aircraft manufacturing group. And here we have their ARJ21, 919 and 929. So the 919 was released on its first commercial flight something like two weeks ago. And the ARJ was something that was developed about 15 years ago. And it was uh, a licensed design from something like the McDonnell Douglas 80, but it was greatly modified from that. Okay, the 919 has been developed over a great many years. I think that project started in something like 2004 even, and the 929 is not yet released, but it will be developed over the you know, next decade or something like that. So the C919 is comparable to the 737 and the A320, and it's really China trying to break into the aerospace market and be less reliant on external suppliers. However, I do know that it has a lot of uh, Western subcomponents in it currently. There's Comac, and then right next to them I see the China 
Eastern Airline. It's the only airline that we've got here today. And it's interesting that they've got an Airbus A350 as their main model. These two guys need to get together and uh, have China Eastern buying some uh, 919s from them, more models. With that set, I just found a China Eastern model of the C919. So, uh, and look, it's right at the front. <laughs> Somebody is on message for sure. And here's a great stand for those that know me. You know, I do a lot of videos on the Shanghai Metro and here we have a Shanghai Metro stand, the Shanghai Shantong Metro Group. Uh, you know, I always say map time and you know, here's a map. It's not showing any of the new lines that are going in at the moment. And then we've got a few bits of detail here talking about the fact that there are 831 kilometers over 20 lines. That's if you include the Pujian and the Maglev. And we are over 10 million passengers per day, covering something like 73% of urban, I think that means uh, public transport rather than bus. And there we can see some of the photos of the interesting stations. That is the one at Yuan Gardens, if I'm not wrong. There's also some details about the amount of solar panels they are using as far as going carbon neutral is concerned. And this is the depot off of Line 3, which is really close to my home. And I know they've put this park on the top, but it's not publicly available as far as I'm aware. So anyway, there you go. That's the, that's the Shanghai metro component of carbon neutrality. And of course, really important from a public transport perspective. There's some very small stands along here. I noticed that this is Rolls-Royce. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what they are displaying on such a small stand but it looks like they've got some models of some wind farms etc various bits of infrastructure there from Rolls-Royce hello I found the Shanghai transportation card stand and uh, I've just been talking to these two lovely people here and you can see look here's the uh, here's the card here everything in Chinese and it's the yes the Shanghai public transportation card okay Bye bye. <laughs> Into 7.1, there we have Shell. We've lost all of the transportation now, and we're into uh, energy providers, mainly showing a lot of uh, solar and wind. Tesla were not at the auto show, and here they are again. I think what they're doing here is not so much on the car side, but what they're showing is on the corporate side how green they are. Uh, this is the Shanghai Gigafactory and we've got one or two details in the background. There's a Model 3 there. So whether that was blind luck or by design, Tesla have actually got all of their cars here. So there's a Model 3 and there's a Model Y and we've got an S and an X on the other Tesla stand. So I, I kind of hope that that was uh, by design. We have the Lingan Group hosting what is the International Hydrogen Energy Valley. Uh, another nice model, seeing a lot of hydrogen tanks in there. Uh, hydrogen fuel cells. And, and this kind gentleman just gave me a bag from Cummins. And Cummins are one of the companies that have got the hydrogen fuel cells. So here we have their kind of sub-brand, which is Accelera. And uh, what wattage is this fuel cell here, sir? Uh, I mean? how, how many kilowatts is this? Uh, 150. Right, so 150 kilowatt hydrogen fuel cell. Yes, yes. yes. And then this is this some kind of E-axle? E-motor. E-motor, okay. Yes. Right. Mainly for buses, I would have thought. Heavy duty bus. Right, heavy duty, heavy duty, duty truck. Heavy duty truck, right, mm. okay, fantastic. Mm. And this is really a model showing a larger. Uh, uh, electro ladder. I'm Tim. Tim. Nice Hi. to meet you. Hi. Thank Hi. you nice very much. You. Thank you very much for showing me your Cummins you Accelerator stuff. Okay, bye bye. There's many banks here. I guess they're trying to show that they are investing and supporting carbon neutrality. Uh, I knew we would find it somewhere. And indeed we did. There's a massive camping trend going on in China at the moment. And there we have this one. Uh, 
how carbon neutral <laughs> this stand is with all of that carpet, I will leave you to judge. A slightly random set of other companies here. So we've got uh, PricewaterhouseCoopers, L'Oreal, Baowu, Midia, and then CEO. It's near lunchtime, so PricewaterhouseCoopers have obviously got a set up there to do some presentations. I think L'Oreal is mainly focused on sustainable materials, energy conservation technologies, some engineering elements coming into the show now just to show you how complicated some of these stands can be there's a little look inside the technical department of the l'oreal stand absolutely massive loads of tech there this is an interesting stand impact hub shanghai some examples of sustainable packaging a large stand from china telecom there and then this one is the China Forestry Group Corporation. I think this is promoting the, the use of, I assume, sustainable wood supplies. Here's the BASF stand uh, covering a number of things. I think that's recycled material there. They're talking about uh, Battery recycling in this one, battery materials research here, something on agriculture here, and finally something regarding solar cells on that part there. So a lot of different elements to the BASF. We've got Budweiser here. I don't see any samples though. There's some more packaging suppliers and Arup. So yes, some more civil engineering. And then some smaller uh, stands here. And this is a very large stand on SCG, which is the Shanghai Construction Group. So, you know, probably the company that's responsible for those really large and fast projects that we see so much of in China on the Arc Plus stand, actually a model of the very building that I'm in right now, and a great many details of a number of projects and philosophies for carbon reduction and neutrality, including what I see here as some triple glazed models. This is the Air Liquide stand, obviously experts in gas and liquid transportation, hydrogen production and a hydrogen fuel cell bike with a hydrogen tank here and I guess that's the fuel cell down inside. Some more engineering stands so here's Midia most famous for air conditioning I guess got some intelligent building I noticed VRV and IOT there so you know the classic kind of elements that you'd expect to see and you can see here some intelligent uh, wall batteries and uh, VRV elements. Explore the potential of trash. Uh, I think they're 3D printing with some uh, recycled plastic. Finally hall number eight. Let's have a look down here. We've got SGS who are a kind of laboratory testing organization. Next to SGS are Bureau Veritas and TUV or TUV Sud. So they are all organizations that are kind of for testing and verification. Makes total sense that they are together. This is the Shanghai Electric Stand. And as you would expect, uh, well, a very large and a focus on solar and wind power and then we have the energy stand better city better life that was the saying used in the 2010 Shanghai Expo and I think this large and empty stand is Envision manufacturers of I guess solar cells and uh, wind turbines China Huadian, so possibly the largest uh, individual stand of the entire expo, focused on wind power there, and there's some solar 
there, at least in that model. But an absolutely massive stand. KPMG still going strong on one of their uh, lectures. They can see ESG here, so environmental and social governance. So they're probably acting as consultants in that field. We've kind of got the really big hitters here. So we've got the China Fadian, we've got China planning there. We've got Sinopec, so the large petrol producing company in China. We've got State Grid. Yeah, these are all government entities then we've got another state grid and then we've got various banks here we've got the bank of communications there you can see we have these maps on the floor here so you can see that's kind of that whole chinese entity there the bank of communication are having their main video produced for them here presentations being done this is on the ICBC stand this is the banking zone I'll try not to wiggle the camera around too much we've got ICBC there the agricultural bank the construction bank I can't remember who was right at the end there then we've got SHRCB here the Bank of Shanghai SPD bank and then that's that state grid there oh it was the bank of communications up on the right hand side over there all with really large stands um, full of great ideas i'm sure state grid corporation of china more models a nice stuff on with electricity pylons and a big nest on the top there's bank zone this is what happens at the end of an expo they come and take the plants away and then right at the end of Hall 8, I notice we've got the American Chamber of Commerce Pavilion here with these three companies, the Carbon Management Journey, Marriott Hotel, and Kuhn and Nagel, if I pronounce, pronounce that correctly. So Am Cham Shanghai, more plants being taken away. So that's it, that's the four halls of the first Shanghai Carbon Neutral Expo here at the NECC. We saw two halls of cars, we saw two halls of everybody else, engineering, test, research, uh, energy providers and banks, lots of banks. Uh, the expo itself was very poorly advertised, so that will explain why it was poorly attended as well. And I'll leave it to you to decide on whether this was truly uh, something carbon neutral in itself, very doubtful. Yeah, a lot of people here, a lot of energy, a lot of materials. So I don't think the expo within itself was actually carbon neutral. Hope that was interesting nonetheless and that you enjoyed that. Please consider liking, subscribing and join me on the next one. Okay, bye-bye. There go the plants.